Hi all, today I want to break down a SnakeMake pipeline for ribosic analysis to show you the inner workings of SnakeMake. SnakeMake is a workflow manager. It takes each step in a bioinformatics pipeline and automates the run by launching the different jobs as needed. This sounds very simple, but things can get confusing quite quickly. So this is the script that we are going to use today. And if you scroll down, you see the different rules. And you can see that the rules here are easy to connect because the output of one rule fits into the input of the other one. However, if we go to the top of the script, things are a little bit more confusing. We start by defining a bunch of parameters. That's okay. Then we have this for loop and creation of a dictionary. It's not very clear. Then we have this rule all that only has an input. And then we have this rule that has as an input this function and has these wildcards as parameters. So this is difficult to track and is not as straightforward. So by the end of the video, you will have a clear idea of what all of these things are doing and you will be in a better position to use this script, to debug it eventually and to expand it as you wish. Okay, before we start, let's recap a little bit what RiboSeq is doing. So in RiboSeq, you take total RNA and RNA from bound to ribosomes from samples in different conditions. And then you compare all of these libraries to understand the differences in translational efficiency between the conditions. So before we go into the details of the code, let's take a minute and look at the different jobs that we are going to launch. We are going to do that with this line here that will generate our graph. So this is the graph of jobs that we are going to execute. Each box is one job. And if we look, we start here at the top with this local copy rule that copies the FASTAQ files. And this is done for each and every single FASTAQ, both for the RNA and the RFP conditions. And you see that these rules uh, are quite linear for each of the independent uh, FASTAQ files. Uh, but at the end, we create these tables that are coming from mapping those process FASTAQ files and we feed them into this function XTail that will give us the final file that we want. So let me walk you very briefly through the code to process and generate the count tables that we feed into XTail. The first thing that we do is create a local copy of our FASTAQ file. This we'll create a local copy then we do this remove optical that is just removing some artifact from illumina sequencing reads then this results is fed into the adapter trimming so this adapter trim reads are then removed of ribosomal contaminants and then we take those reads we do a size selection and this will depend on whether they are the rna or the rfps and once we have those size selected reads we do the mapping with this trans rule map and then we do some small formatting of the table before we feed it to excel so you see that here the rules feed into each other quite directly and all of the commands are one liners that you have here and they are quite explicit so here we are doing the mapping we do bb map sh and then we feed the input the output and, and what's the reference the transcript of that we will fit to this one liner. And all of those rules are pretty much the same around with a one liner that is quite self-explanatory. So I will not go into deep details into that rule. For the final rule, this X tail, we are indeed running a script here. And I will not go into the details of those because I have a dedicated video. So there will be a link now for that video if you want to go and check and dive more into detail. In any case, from the perspective of building the pipeline, this rule XTail is probably the most complicated because we have to have as inputs all these count tables from the different FASTQ files, both for the ribosomal bound RNA and the total RNA. And that's where we have to define this function here. Okay, with that out of the way, let's look at the script in detail. So we start with defining these parameters. Here we give this variable project 
the name of our project in this case will be explain and this is a normal variable that will be different to other type of variable that I will define in a second then we give the name of the metadata file and the position of the transcript tone sequences to which the FASTA queue will be defined. Okay, that's just defining some parameters. And then we have this chunk here that is critical to understand what is going on in the rest of the code. Here, essentially, what we are doing is defining a dictionary where we load for every sample the sample name and what type of library it is, whether it is like the total RNA or the ribosomal bound. We do that by loading the metadata that we defined previously. So this is the metadata table where we have the sample names, we have the different conditions, and we have the type of material, whether it is total RNA or this ribosomal bound fraction that we are calling RPF here. So after defining that dictionary, we start with the rules and we have this rule all that only has an input. And this is because this is the end file that we want for the whole pipeline. This is a special rule and I have a dedicated video with the link now here that you can click if you want to go more deep into that. But remember this rule all is the end point of the pipeline. So now pay attention to this because I think it will help you a lot to work with your SnakeMate pipeline. I recommend to write your code from the end to the beginning. So you start with rule all and then you define the rule that will generate as an output the input of rule all. And after that, you write the rule that as an output will generate the input for that previous rule. In other words, I recommend you to write your pipeline backwards. This is how wildcard propagates and this is what we are going to touch now and hopefully clarify a little bit more this concept as well. Right, so now let's move to the second rule starting from the end, this Excel rule. But before that we have to deal with this function here that is the function that defines the inputs of Excel. So this function generates the list of all the count tables that will be fed into this Excel rule and Excel program. So the first thing to note is that this function generates a list of files. And the second one is that it's taking wildcards as a parameter. So the concept of wildcard is complex. And yes, I have a video for that if you're interested, but let me explain what is going on in this particular case. So SnakeMake will look at this rule all input, and then we'll look, we'll look at the other rules and we'll see which of the outputs of the other rules match that input and in this case is this x tail that would be matching however if you look here at the output of x tail you have that this is not a complete match but here there is something written between brackets and this is exactly what we call the wildcard and what snake may will take will define this project wildcard and will assign this the value of this project variable that is a normal variable if you want that we defined previously and that has the name explain so going back to the function all the wildcards are passed together within this main variable and to access the project wildcard we have to use the notation wildcard.project and as you see this is the only wildcard generated here or defined by rule all for the next steps these wildcard samples and sample types will be defined by this other function so they are not not all of the wildcards are defined by the rule all in this case the input from the x tail will be defining this sample wildcard and this type wildcard over here so now if we go and run the pipeline here we're doing a dry run we see that we generated all those input for X tail so and these are the files provided to that rule X tail so for the rest of the rules there will be no more wildcard created and they will be passed in this case from one to the next so for primary table to transmap to size select all the way to the end uh, where we have here the starting data know that to do that we have to write 
the name of the physical file using these wildcards. There could be other ways, but that's how we define it in this case. And, and that's it. So if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. This will make all this content more accessible to you in the future and to people like you. And if you want to dive into any snake make concept, don't forget to check the snake make playlist that I have and I will see you there.